Hello and welcome back to another episode of Ball Place TIS 100. So we just did Interrupt Handler. Um, that's unlocked this simple sandbox, which isn't a puzzle in its own right. It looks like some sort of way of creating your own puzzles or experimentating or whatever. Um, so we're going to ignore Simple Sandbox and go on to Signal Pattern Detector. So what do we need to do for this one? Read a value from in, look for the pattern 0, 0, 0, write 1 when pattern is found, otherwise we're writing a 0. So, what we need to do is we could look for the pattern 0, 0, 0. And if you had to match at any generic pattern like 174, that's what you would have to do. But for this one, we don't really need to do that, do we? we? All we need to do is check how many zeros we have seen in a row. And if that number is three or more, we found it. And if the number is less than three, we haven't. So what I'm proposing to do is use these two boxes. And the top one, its job is going to be count the number of zeros we have seen in a row. And I'm presuming that when we enter this loop, the accumulator already currently contains the number we have seen so far. So with that in mind, what we need to do is we would need to save what's currently there. So there could be one there, there could be eight there, there could be 53 there, there could be zero there. Save the accumulator. Move um, up to the register and then jump on equal to zero zero so this bit of code is when we find a non-zero value so what that would do is we would have to move so we need to reset our accumulator move zero to the accumulator move Send the zero for the output. And that'll, so this will leave this back and then jump, jump. We need to put, put a start, um, a start up there, label, whatever we call them. Okay, so we put a start label up there, move zero to down, and then we need to jump back to the start. Yes. So this contained the number that we currently found. We, okay, we came in. We saved it. We checked what was currently coming in. It's not equal to zero, so it's a number, but it's not zero. So we reset the accumulator. We send a zero down here. We could send the accumulator. They're both zero. It doesn't really matter. And we jump back to the start. But if it is zero, we need to restore the value we saved. So there could have been a five in it before. There could be a zero in it before. No, and it's not save as a swap. To bring it back, we need to add one. And then we need to send that result down. So that would be the current count of zero. So the first time we see a zero, we'll output one, two, three, keep going. We could, you know, if we'd seen 83 zeros in a row, it would be outputting 83. And as soon as it sees anything but a zero, it will reset that count to, to, to zero. So move the accumulator down. And jump. We don't need to jump back to start. It does that automatically. So just to go over that again, when we find a zero swap, get the value that we stored back here, back in. It was the previous count of how many zeros we'd seen before we got this number in. We add one to it and we send it down. So this box job is to determine whether that number we have seen is bigger or less than three. So move up to the register. Subtract two from it. Now again, this is this is this trick. Um, it's not really a trick. It's just you know common sense, I suppose. That we that if you were doing most programming language, you'd have less than or equal to signs. And like to make it absolutely clear, what you know what, what, what I would prefer to do if 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 the code was to be read by someone else was you know if you're checking for three, include three in the code. So you do if it's greater than or equal to three. But obviously we can't do that because we don't have those equivalent greater than or equal to instructions. Well, maybe we do. But anyway, um, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 2 and jump if greater than 0. 
which is jump gz jump greater than zero found so this is our not found code i'm just going to put a label here just just to be absolutely clear i'm going to put a start label up here as well just in case we need it and then we have found okay like i don't technically need this not found label it's just clear in my head you know like to label the code now i believe we can use comments um let's just see make sure let's just see is it a hash do i read somewhere yeah looks good not found yeah brilliant so we can we can use it we can use a comment uh here so not found so then that is we're going to send a zero down so move zero or oh, we'll move it right who cares yep we can send it over here or down it's it's six or one half a dozen of the other and jump back to start if we found it move a one right and that looks pretty good so um just this gotta move left to down and move up to down and off we go yep looking like it's doing its job um now the interesting thing i think this is fascinating and you probably well i don't know but anyway um like you've got all this it's like a modern um cpu with all these cores that are being probably left unused because um writing threaded or parallel code is hard it's tricky you've got to think about it it's far easier it's the you know brute force your way through you know in simple linear um fashion than to think about how to parallelize code but you know i mean even for something as simple as this it, there probably are optimizations you know you could probably have some of this being done at the same time as as the other but anyway that's the solution for that one that was signal pattern detector um this was paul playing it um thank you for watching if you like the video please uh, drop a like on it if you're interested in what you see you can subscribe to the channel or send some comments below i'd love to read them thank you again for watching bye now